perfect. Well, hi there guys, so I've got it out to the bush at last, um, it's a trip down to uh, down Gisborne Way, and a uh, long drive, got straight here, um, some of the guys who were, um, they're just coming here for the hunting, bring them down, so I've brought um, three lads down there, the cock is looking after them for the hunting to give me a bit of a bit of time in the bush, um, so my cunning plan is I've just, I'd spotted this area um, when I've been down here before, and so I've just come to see, if, have a bit of a check out, make sure I, I'm going to put a hammock up, a basher, a bit of a sheltered area there. We've got some pretty bad rain coming in by the look of it, and it's been raining already today. So I'm here for two nights. Um, it's Friday night, uh, yeah, Friday night now. Um, well, I'm getting towards uh, dinner time. Um, Sunday morning, early bug out, um, all being well, unless it becomes a total washout. Um, so I'm going to try and film a variety of different things this weekend and what I'll do, I'll split them up. Obviously I know some people are not into hunting and fishing or anything like that. But my cunning plan is to get a few hours hunting in every day. Um, but also I'll show the setting up of the camp, my basher, hammock, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I'm going to be doing some bushcraft stuff. I've got some different cooking gear with me. So I'm going to look at doing some different things. A lot of it's going to be quite simple because I don't want to spend a huge amount of time on cooking. Um, managing particular fires and things. So I've got my hobo stove, I've got some meth few hexes and I'll have a, be having a fire as well. Um, also um, I've got permission to fish down in the river, um, there are trout and eels so I've got a bit of fishing gear, I'm going to set that up, a bit of hobo style um, and then obviously if I do shoot anything that will be on a separate video, um, clearly so everybody, you know, if anybody doesn't want to, want to watch that kind of thing that's absolutely fine but I'll also show you how I uh, clean and growl um, well predominantly goats in this area of the bush, um, I've stopped quite early, I've probably done about a 20, 25 minute walk from the station out to here and um, there's nothing around um, it's a 40 minute drive on the main on the side road to get back to the main road so it should be pretty quiet apart from the streams are already building a bit and uh, but the reason I've stopped here rather than going in deeper which I could is obviously the further in that way I go then it limits what I'm doing I'd rather hunt in that direction down and around rather than obviously walking that way where you know the, the house is over there there's I mean it's, over a bloody big hill and miles away but you never know you know somebody might decide if the other guys decide to come and nosy at what I'm doing spoil my quiet weekend um, you know so gotta think of safety but like I say that'll be on a separate one and I'll clearly label that this will be my bushcrafting weekend you know so anyway I hope you come along for the trip I'm gonna sign off now get something uh, get something going and uh, get camp up and the first thing I always do is in my pack is uh, this is uh, an alpine pack by um, K2 Marie, the very good lady down there, makes a, a number of different packs and these are really bomb proof I have a big day pack she made specially I sent a design down, told her what I wanted, she made for me absolutely awesome, you can send stuff back she'll tweak it, modify it and all sorts good old canvas um, this one has a bit of an internal frame system but not a lot um, it was as light as I could possibly get but still keep it a good solid canvas pack um, I'll show you up here that front pocket, that's a 10 litre day bag. It's a good 10 litres, it's more than that. Um, but it's a great little day pack, so that just zips off. Um, not a lot of pockets on, like this is the Alpine pack. I bought this for going down for a tar and chamois. But uh, good pocket under the lid. Everything's basically good, big and simple. Bit like me, just how I like it. But like I said, what I always do, I'm gonna, I'll show you these at the minute. I don't normally keep these in the top, but uh, I'll go into the, some things later. Oh, and uh, what I do, I keep really handy waterproofs right at the very top just in case I get caught in a real downpour or same sort of thing. If you happen to be out and about and uh, you fall over, hurt yourself, you know, get some waterproofs on, cut the wind chill, can save your life. So right at the very top of my pack, next item down is my basher or tarp or hoochie. I'll take that off, you might be able to see me. Right over there with the rifle. And this is one of the silk coil ones, it's quite new, I've only had this out a couple of times before but one of the things I'm going to be doing over the next day or so is I'm wanting to replace a lot of, I've got um, paracord on a lot of the fixings 
and I'm wanting to replace those with um, thinner stuff because obviously I've got a super light tarp and it's probably half as heavy again because of the cordages so here we go first thing I do when I get anywhere first thing you do get a roof up and if it does start to rain or it gets really bad or anything else you know you're under protection is I keep the ridge line right at the very top so I keep the bag and the uh, tarp stays in there keeps it nice and clean keeps it off the floor there's the ridge line find where it's close to which is there that's good okay so I'll take the short length and I'm just going to go behind the camera a minute and what I'm going to do is I'll spin you around see if I can see what you're doing and to that tree there and basically my first short length which is here we'll go around here approximately I tend to go about head height simply because that means then when I'm in it I can stand up which makes life a lot easier so there we go and what I'm going to do on here is just put your bank knot into there pinch up nice and tight and bring it across Right, then pull that out. Get the other longer line which I keep coiled up, and that's going to go across to that one. Now I'm going to have to have a little bit of a tinker with this because um, I'll bring it back because I'm not sure if I'm going to go to the big one or to the slightly smaller. I think I'll go to the bigger one. In fact, in fact, I will. Basically, just two quick release hitches on that side. Oh. I do like my quick release knots. Okay. Now then, this side, basically, all I do is I basically just wind the cordage around the main line, tie a bow, and it does the job four or five turns. Same on both sides, you don't need any fancy prussics or anything else. Just literally just wind your piece of cord around it, tie a bow. Bow's holding your shoes all day long, will hold your basher. They have done for mine for donkey's years and it's very simple, very easy to do. Great when your fingers are cold. So I'll bring you back in a mo when it's all up. Hi right, guys, so that's the, uh, got the basher up, I'll have a quick show around. Um, what I do is I have uh, about five metres of cord hanked to each of the uh, tie out points, or at least, well not all of them, but uh, three on each side, centre lines on there, so that means I've got a you know good length of cord to tie up. And um, then what I do is I keep a spare bag with another load of like five metre hanks. Generally that can reach just about anything I need to reach. Um, while I've been off I've also put the long sleeves on, the uh, black player out and about. I've got the old uh, Dettol and baby oil on, but I've already got a, quite a few bites before I got around to putting this on. So And something's just tagged me through my shirt as well, that was a beggar, whatever that was. But and then, like I say, what I've done is I've, as I've tied these out, a little bit of a tip because I keep them a bit longer. Any loose cordage when you've done, keep your knots, you know, plenty, plenty of line on your knots. That uses up some of the line if you've only got a short run. But then, when you've done, tidy the other piece up. If it gets windy, it stops it flapping around, catching on branches and things, stops it going up the ground and getting dirty, stops you treading on it and things. Um, I've left this particular point, I could tie this out to the ground if it gets really windy. If not, this obviously gives me a runoff. Um, for, for the tarp on this side, um, keep it a little bit higher at the front, that's uh, generally now just makes it easier and as you can see I'm actually stood up so it just makes personal admin and anything else like that just an awful lot easier if it gets really, you know, if the weather were to get really bad and really windy obviously what I can actually do is just run the, uh, co run the cords which as you can see I've got one down on the floor down there and one to the tree here so what I can actually do is just run those down lower so that, you know, make sure the shelter goes well below the sides of the hammock, which I'm going to put up now. So I'm going to crack on with that and uh, get the hammock up and then in a bit I'll be able to get a brew on. So here we are, I've, uh, I've got the uh, hammock up, 
as you can see here. I'm trying out, this is the Dyneman I think, or Blue Steel. Can't say I'm, you know, not 100% confident. I've actually, I've actually doubled these up, so I've got the, the original one, which will be the, you know, the tie outline and the uh, spare that I had. I've sort of like doubled up on it just to make sure. Although, I mean, my hammock's pretty low to the ground, so even if it slid down, I'm not going to fall very far. Um, but we'll, I'll see how that goes. And again, that's just a bit of towards, you know, trying to lighten my gear up, which is what I mentioned a bit earlier about when I get the uh, using the silt tap with the heavy cordages. I'm going to swap them to lighter cordages, which, you know, point of having a 550 paracord on everywhere it's a bit of a throwback to the uh, the bushcrafting era and all that but so i've set my uh, hammock up here in here i've just got a thermo rest that's just reflating itself at the moment and a three season down bag no idea what the make is that's from the uk um it's on a, one of the shows um and it was a, a trial one so you know i got quite cheap a um, bit of a tip with the thermo rests is when you put your thermos in don't blow it up hard just just enough just so you're going to have that insulation layer you don't need a comfort layer it's just for the insulation and if you blow it up too hard it's really difficult to keep it in your bag and you slide off it doesn't mold to you so just just enough air in just so that it's uh you know it won't go flat when you put your body weight on it for the insulation but other than that fairly soft and the reason i put my hammock really quite low is so that hey, there sits my chair as well so i can sit in here and my tootsies are on the floor and it's quite comfortable so I can just sit and have a rock and then swing my feet round where I want to have a read of my book later on and uh, there we are a bit of a gear piled out uh, not exactly a good system going at the moment simply because it's been a while and I haven't got a system um, but I've got a big spare tarp there um, I brought some gear I probably wouldn't have done um, normally if I'd have been going either a longer distance or things like that but because I knew it was a pretty short distance and there's a potential for the weather to be a bit crappy I've brought a spare tarp so I've got a big 4x4 tarp um, which I tend to use more winter times just because it drops much lower you know so you can get a, a much bigger much bigger V for working under but I'll pop that up between the trees here which is why I really like the look of it possibly even from the centre of, of this one and then going away to keep an area clear um, which is a nice clear area there you don't get a lot of that around here it's generally a bit thick bush um, and that will give me somewhere I can work under you know do a bit of filming under show you bits and pieces um, it's actually now half past four so I'm gonna crack on I need to get myself some water um, nice stream running down here um, I always um, you know basically no matter where I'm even though the street a lot of the streams in New Zealand are beautiful um, I always purify them um, simply because um, you know, for all I know, there could be a dead possum, rat, you know, um, chamois, anything just up that stream there, rotting away in the stream and bugs and diseases coming down it. You don't know, you know, there might not be any, you know, it might be lovely and crystal clear, but you're never too sure. And I've had the Aztec two step a couple of times, you know, so I've got um, just chlorine tablets or iodine. If you're using iodine, just make sure that whoever, if you're using it or you're with anybody else, make sure nobody's got any thyroid problems. Um, I'm not sure what I put, I don't think I put my uh, Millbank bag in. I often carry a Millbank bag for cleaning water, but um, I know the stream here is very clean, um, clear. So anyway, I'll just uh, collect some water in my main, um, I've got like a the Ortlieb type bag. I don't think it, I don't think it is an Ortlieb. I'll show, you the, I'll show you the bits of gear and the cooking gear and everything later. I'm gonna collect some water and then uh, get the old hobo stove and I'll get a, get a brew going. I quite fancy a cup of tea. I might even have a cup of coffee. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, just been squaring away the camp um, I'll just give you a quick show around flip the screen so I can see what I'm showing you but uh, basically I've got my uh, my pack and stuff here um, I, I keep my clothes and anything else I don't need in the pack in the dry bag anything will do for a dry bag heavy duty bin bag anything like that this came with another pack so I use it and again if I was going for weight I wouldn't but here it's not so much a problem all my empty bags stuff bags anything that anything goes in goes into the front of that in between the pack and the bag few bits and pieces that were in the pockets anyway, insect repellents handy, a couple of bin bags, few, I've got my uh, axe and saw in that side, setting up the bag for when I go for a bit of a bimble, sorry, setting up the bag when I go for a bit of a bimble, most of my kit, anything that I've got out, um, I tend to just, um, I keep right underneath the center of the, uh, the uh, basher, obvious reasons, it keeps everything, you know, helps to keep everything dry, um, my 
Um, four by four there in case I need it. First aid kit handy. Some of the fishing gear for the hobo stuff. I've got a couple of knives I'll show you later on. That's um, part of the testing. But I can keep things off the ground as well because I'm not, it's, although it's, it is spitting a little bit, it's not too bad. So I'm using my waterproofs to keep everything off the ground. If necessary, I'd, I'd just put a bin bag down and do the same again. That way, if you keep everything just either off the ground or on something, if it you know does rain really heavy and you get a bit of water going through, it'll go underneath your gear instead of wetting your gear. Got my books and things ready for this evening. Um, waterproof bag for the camera and camera gear. And just setting up the kitchen. So I've just been down and got some water. Um, first trip down, I fill everything I can. Filled up the cup, uh, my drinking bottle, my camp bottle. Um, food all in one bag, in one place. Everything ready. And I'm going to get the old Kelly kettle going. Um, what I do with the Kelly kettle, and a bit hard with one hand, but I'll bring this out and just get it out, is basically I carry everything ready for the first brew or two. So there's enough wood there to get a couple of brews out of it. So um, I don't, you know, the, uh, this old survival thing, what I tend to do is I think, well, you know, even the old pioneers didn't just get up and walk out of the house with nothing. They tended to take whatever they needed for the first fire or whatever. So the idea here is I've got here, I've got what I need to make a brew. You know, although I know I've got other means of, of cooking and things, this at least is, you know, one that's here and it's ready. And uh, then what I'll do is over, you know, over the next day and so on things, I'll keep collecting wood, even if I have to split some wood to get some dry timber, but I can replace this, but it means I'm not having to hunt for dry timber now. And if, you know, the forecast is right and it does rain heavy, that just gets harder and miserable and all the rest of it. So it means I can stop, I can make a brew. You know, if, if all I was carrying was the Kelly, because I was just going to be boiling water, then uh, I'm ready for my first couple of goes. Fire lighter, this is just basically, you know, the lint and um, Vaseline. And a lighter, so it's all self-contained. So although I'll try and use some ferro serum as much as I can, big lighters. So I'll carry them. I'll get this off the ground in a minute. And a little tip when you boil in the kettle, use your cup to measure the water in there, but keep your pieces of wood small. You know, even on the kettle, don't use pieces of wood which are the full length of the Kelly kettle. You want the heat down here. You want the heat where the water is. If you're heating up here, all you do is you're just heating empty space and empty air and aluminium. So, you know, keep, keep your fire low. And the lower the fire is, then the heat travels up anyway. And, uh, you know, you, you use the fuel, a lot of this fuel, it's a lot more efficient, boils a lot quicker. And like I say, just putting the amount of fuel in you want helps, uh, water in as well helps. So, right, I'm going to crack on, I'm going to make a brew and uh, bring you back in a mo. Right, so it's uh, get the old ferro rod out, uh, kept in the pocket, attached to my belt and uh, in the pocket. It's just, that's just the way I prefer to keep mine on my little uh, belt set up. And then a, a good striker, in this case, a little neck knife, always handy. And there she goes. Over. Now start moving some wood in. Cracking away there, good stuff. A couple more bits, just been in a split some of these bits down with the old uh, axe, just going a bit smaller. Ah, come, as soon as you put that on, it starts to roar away. One and two. So it's wood in, so it sits flat. Don't forget to keep the cork out, don't leave the cork in. <laughs> and I've done that before as well. Knife away. I steal away, I rod away, get in, nice and safe, into the pocket, and uh, there she goes. Get the brew gear on. Oh, there we go, I've used probably, oh gosh, it's nearly done actually, but I bet I've used a quarter of the wood that was actually in there. A couple more, I'll make sure I get this into a good rolling boil. I can hear the boil, I can hear it, hear the water having a good rolling boil in there. That's your tip, get it to a good rolling boil. That's clean. Little tip with their Kelly, keep the handle off the side here and the chain well away. That gives you that's your, that's your means then of lifting it and pouring with it. But you've got a good steam coming out of the uh, pot and a nice pot, nice bit of coffee ready. A uh, little uh, that's a toke, so just a couple of bits I'm trying with. Um, with the uh, titanium.
And there she goes, she's rolling away. Be careful when you lift this up, don't just lift the handle straight up and up because you can have a lot of heat coming out of here, so don't just lift the handle up, you'll burn yourself. So you both sides to lift it away from the heat, like that. Then, that's when you can then lift it with the handle up the centre and use the chain here to pour it into the cup. There we go. Now what I would suggest, just bob those to the side. You can bob your cork in if you want, keep anything out of there. If you're using powdered milk, a little tip with powdered milk here is don't put it straight into boiling water. If you put it straight into the boiling coffee, it'll curdle and go all thick and lumpy. So you need to give that a few minutes to cool down before you put your powdered milk in. So keeping everything away, everything else has gone away, the tinder's gone away, the brew bag's gone away, everything's gone away in that pack. The only thing currently out now is my spoon and my uh, powdered milk for in a few minutes. Just get that bit of wood out of there. And that, mean, that will let me do that. I've put the, uh, the wood I've actually got all split up over here. I've actually put that in the little uh, it's a stainless plate, but I'll be turning that into a frying pan for my breakfast in the morning. Gammon, egg and tomatoes. And, uh, but the main reason for that is most of this stuff doesn't matter. It can chuck it down all night long. It won't do any harm. But obviously that wood I want out of the way. So any sign of any more, any, you know, any more rain than just the odd drop, and that'll be straight underneath the shelter, out of the way. And I'll probably do that anyway, so I don't kick it over. So there we go, I'm going to sort my coffee out, have a nice cup of coffee, and uh, let's sit down. Hi right, guys, um, second attempt at this, I just realised the camera wasn't on. Um, but I'm just about to take myself out for a little walk. Um, I've got my camp sorted now, um, had my coffee um, up here, I've got my food bag. Um, basically it's in a, it's not really a dry bag but it's just off the floor. Um, the only thing really to bother about, and I did, there might be odd tree rats around so I don't really want my food on the floor. Um, other than that, there isn't much that's going to bother anything um, out here. I've um, got my gear ready for a little wander around the bit, bit of a wander around the bush. Um, other stuff set up for later on. I've taken the food out I want for my evening meal, stacked that ready and everything. I've also um, cut myself some um, firewood and uh, cut a couple. Found a, a decent uh, piece of thick dry standing and split that all down and got various other bits and. Uh, Generally speaking, it seems to be um, it's pretty dry. Oops, better zoom that back out. A bit scary. Um, other than the moss on it, so basically you get a good little bed of uh, fire going. I don't intend to do much. I might not even have one tonight. I'll see how I feel when I get back. It's been a long day. Um, it might be back. Something to eat. You know, good cup of get some fluid back on board. There's a lot of sweating going on, and uh, into the pit. So anyway, we'll see you later. Um, I am going to do something either tonight or tomorrow, probably tonight because it's dry, so I'm guaranteed the weather. I'm going to do a little one on torches, um, but that'll probably come up separate, um, or else this is just get too long. I'm going to try and just put the pieces together, um, which is what I'll do, and obviously cut out a lot of the dross. Um, but I'll try and put various um, different bits of what I'm doing, whether it's a fire lighting, maybe even the Kelly kettle, or s split things up. So um, if you see a number of videos coming out, that's why. So I'll probably leave this bit in. So with that I'm going to sign off, I'm going to take myself for a little walk through the bush and uh, see what it's like, see what sort of, uh, see what's like, what it's like in a couple of hours when I get back. So, onward. 